Hey, this is Mr. Bean from flipmath.com, and we're now to our last video in this series on how to calculate any day of the week in history. This lesson is going to talk about how to do the century and year values. Now, if you haven't looked at any of the other videos in this series, you probably want to go back and look at parts one and two, especially two, where you, we start to talk about the month and day values. If you haven't looked at that, this is going to really make no sense to you, okay? So now, and as a reminder, this only works for days on October 15th, 1582, and on. So what we'll be doing today is we're going to add up some numbers, divide by seven, and then the remainder tells you the day of the week. So we add up a whole bunch of numbers, whatever the remainder is, after dividing by seven, tells you the day of the week of that date. All right, so century values. Now, century values aren't too difficult. We're going to start off with the one that we are in right now. So the century for the 2000s, that has a century value of six. You just have to memorize it and always add an, a little six on to the end of all the numbers you're adding up. Now, if you were the 1900s, which is the next most common date that you would have to figure out, like if you're doing birth dates or just dates in history, then that has a century value of zero. So it's really simple when people tell you they're born in the 1900s and you're trying to figure out the day of the week they were born. It's just a zero for century value. And then the rest of them follow a pattern. It goes zero, six, four, two, zero, six, four, two, and it just keeps going like that over and over again. Okay, so get those written down on your notes. Now to year values, and I gotta warn you, this is the hardest part of this whole thing. This is the part that you may struggle to do in your head. I am gonna give you some little hints to make this easier to do in your head, but most of you will probably need to get a piece of paper out and be able to write down things as we're doing this. So the year values, we take the last two digits, right here, the last two digits of the year, and we divide by four. And we get to forget about what the remainder is this time. We don't focus on that. No decimal, we round down, or another fancy word for that is we truncate. So the last two digits, divide by four, and don't worry about the decimal or the remainder. And then we take that quotient, whatever we just got, and we add it to the last two digits of the year that we just were talking about. Okay, so is that confusing or what? Let me show you how they do this. When we do a couple examples, it makes sense. Let's say to take the year 2016. So if we had 2016, the century value for 2016 is a six. That's just something we have to have memorized. Now, if we're talking about the year value, what we do is we take the last two digits of the year 2016, divide by four, and then we add those last two digits of 16, and that's where that's, this comes from. So now, what does this equal? 16 divided by four is just four. Adding 16, we get 20. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is combine those two values that we have, the century value and the year value, combined to give you a 26. So that is my century and year value practice. Now, I'm gonna show you, you can also convert 26 to five. Now, why is that? because we're dividing by seven when we're all done. If you're going to divide by seven, you only care about the remainder. If we take the number 26 right here and we say, let's divide by seven, what's the remainder? It's a five. So if you wanted, you could reduce this, this thing. So we have century and year value of 2016 could reduce all the way down to a five. All right, let's do another one, 1910. So 1910's century value, if you remember the 1900s, that's a zero, so that makes this easy. And then next up, we're talking about the year value. So you take the last two digits and divide by four, and then you add the same last two digits. So 10 divided by four plus 10. Now what's 10 divided by four? It's going to be two something, two point something, but we don't care about the something, the, the little extra. So 10, four goes into 10 two times with some extra. So you just leave it as two. And then two plus 10 is 12. So now what do we do here? We're gonna combine the century and year value. That combines together to give us 12. And can that reduce? Yeah, it could, but you, when you divide by seven, I mean, yeah, you're gonna divide by seven, the remainder is gonna be five, or you could just reduce it down to five. It's the same thing. All right, let's do another one. The year 2059. Now this one's gonna be hard on purpose. I'm setting this one up because this is difficult and I wanna show you how there's, I'm gonna teach you a little trick to speed things up to make it a little easier. All right, so 2059, let's do what we've been doing. So the century value is a six again, because we're in the 2000s. And now we have to do the year value, take the last two digits, divide by four, add those last two digits, 59, now that's hard. 59 divided by four, what the heck is that? 59 divided by four, I don't know that. Okay, I guess you gotta do it in your head a little bit. Figure out, oh, it goes in 14 and a little bit. So you truncate or round down to 14. So 14 plus 59, which gives you 73. All right, so that's a fairly large number, 73. We combine those together and you get 79. Now 79 could be reduced down, right? Because if you're dividing by seven, it goes into 77, so it reduces down to two. 
So you could take the century and year value and leave it as 79 if you want to just leave it as 79. But I think it's easier to reduce it down in your head to two and then just work with two. So here's some tricks and shortcuts to help us out. This is kind of interesting. Our calendar is on a repeating cycle of every 28 years, or in other words, 28 years ago, the calendar looks exactly the same. Now it actually goes in this interesting five, six, 11, five type of a pattern where it rotates every five years, six years, but you don't know where in that pattern you are, like right at any given moment. Like, is it gonna repeat five years from now, six years from now, 11 years from now? It's gonna be one of those three. But the cycle for sure repeats every 28 years. And so that's why we say 28. So if you subtract a multiple of 28, then you get a smaller year to work with. So 28, 56, 84. Those three numbers, 28, 56, 84, are crucial to help us work with easier years. All right, so let me show you what I'm talking about. 2030. Yeah, we could work with 2030. Look at this, we could do 2030, take 30 plus 30 over four, 30 plus seven, and then you get 37. All right, that works for the cent for the year value, I'm saying, not talking about century value, just the year value. But you could also subtract 28. 2030 minus 28 gives you 2002. So 2002 and 2030 have the same calendar system. So let's see with 02. 02 plus 02 over four, well, that's just two plus zero. So you just get a two. Those two numbers, how are they possibly the same? Because remember, you're dividing by seven and then looking at the remainder. So dividing by seven here goes in 35, goes into 35 with a remainder of two. So yes, the remainder of two here is gonna be the same as this number two there. All right, so it works the same. Let's do one more of those real quick so you can see. 1990, so notice that I'm subtracting this time 84 because we're looking at 28, 56, 84 one of those three numbers. And so I'm trying to do the one that's closest to it. So 1990 minus 84 is 1906. That gives us these same numbers. And watch how much easier this is. If I'm doing 1990, I gotta go 90 plus 90 over four, 90 plus 22, because four goes into 90, 22 times. And then you get 112. That's big number to try and work with and remember. But look at 1906, six plus six over four. So it's six plus one, or in other words, seven. And those two numbers will be the same when you divide by seven, the remainder is the same. Seven goes into 112 evenly, seven goes into seven evenly. So those will have the same remainder. All right, so that's kind of just showing you proof how this works. So now let's go back to the last problem we did, which uh, was 2059. And let's show you how you can make this a little easier. So we have the numbers 28, 56, 84. Though one of those three numbers we wanna subtract. So in this case, we would do the one that's closest. 59 is just over 56. I don't wanna say closest, I should say just, just underneath this number. So we subtract the one that is just underneath it. So 56, so we say 20, 59 minus 56 gives us 2003. So we're gonna work with the calendar year 2003 instead of 2059. So much easier that way. All right, so what's the century value? We have six for our century value. And then the year value is 03 over four plus 03, the last two digits, well, that's just zero plus three. And so therefore we have three as our uh, year value. So century and year value combined gives us nine. And if you'd look back up on, the, on the, your paper, on your notes, you can see that we came up with a two for our other answer. But if you're trying to do it in your head, working with 2059 is really challenging. Working with 2003, much more accessible to you, a lot easier to work with. Okay, so now just a reminder, we, here are the uh, remainder values. Reminder, remainder, remainder values. So here's our uh, zero through six. So let's do some practice. So here we've got March 13th, 2020. This is the beginning of COVID-19, the pandemic. Well, it's the beginning for like a lot of, for America. Those in the United States, this is kind of the official beginning of it where school started to get canceled, shops were closing down and all that. So what day did that happen on? Some of you will just remember. So what I'm gonna have you do is I would recommend you pause the video, try this on your own, and then you can come back and push play and see what you get. You can fast forward and just kind of see if your answer is the same as mine. Okay, so here we go. Here's the explanation. Pause it if you haven't already and try it on your own. So what about the month? The month is a March. March happens to be the third month. That's a value of three. Okay, the day is a 13. The century is a six because it's the 2000s. And then the year is 20 plus 20 over four. So now watch what I'm gonna do here. I'm gonna combine 3, 13, and six. If I add those up, 3, 13, and six, I get 22. So instead of a 22, I'm putting a one. 
Why? Because that's what I do in my head when I'm trying to do this fast. 3, 13, and 6 add up to 22, but I'm always dividing by 7, dividing by 7, and what's the remainder? Divide by 7, what's the remainder? So 22 divided by 7 has a remainder of 1, and that's where that 1 comes from, and why I jumped straight down to a 1, and it just makes it a lot easier. So then we have the 20 plus 5, that all adds together and gives us 26. Divide by 7, what is the remainder? The remainder is a 5. So what day of the week was this? Well, a 5 was on a Friday, so that leaves us with March 13th, 2020 was Friday, Friday the 13th. That was kind of our unofficial beginning of COVID-19 pandemic. Now let's do another one. September 11th, 2001, another rough, sad day for us. What day of the week was this? Some of you are gonna already know this, but let's see if you can do the calculation to get it right. So pause the video, try this one on your own, come back and push play. All right, the month, September, what's the S represent? It's a five. Then we have the day, that one's easy, 11. Century is, centuries is 2000, so it's a six again. And then the year 01, that's actually a pretty easy year to work with. We have 01 plus 01 over four. So now let's combine these things here. Five, 11, and six. If you add those together, you get 22. 22 divided by seven has a remainder of one. So I'm doing that in my head as I calculate it kind of quickly. I could have written 22. You're still gonna get the same answer if you wanna write 22 instead of a one. All right, and then uh, this one plus zero, that's just a one. So you put it together and you get a two. You don't even have to divide by seven. This is kind of like redundant. We already know it's gonna be a remainder of seven, excuse me, a remainder of two. So if it's a two, what day of the week is that? Tuesday. Monday's a one, Tuesday's a two. All right, so September 11th did happen on a Tuesday. All right, last example. So I've been showing these sad days. What in the world happened on June 19th, 1984? It was a very sad day because it was the NBA draft. And on June 19th, 1984, with the first pick, the Houston Rockets, took Akeem Olajuwon, which totally makes sense. He was really good. And then with the second pick, my Portland Trailblazers, who did they pick? Sam Bowie. Now who's Sam Bowie, you might ask? Yeah, you don't know who he is. You probably never heard of him. Now why is this a sad day? Because then the third pick went to the Chicago Bulls and they drafted Michael Jordan. So yeah, it's a little frustrating for me because I am from Portland, I grew up there, and I had to watch Michael Jordan his whole career knowing he could have been with the Blazers. So what day of the week was this sad day? June 19th, 1984. Go ahead and pause the video, see if you can figure out what day that was, and then come back and push play. So June, remember June and July, those are the ones that swap. So July would be July 4th, so June is going to be a four. The day value is just a simple 19. The century value for 1900s is a zero, so remember we're doing 1900s here. And then the year is 84. Now remember, 84, we wanna try and subtract one of those, those uh, 28, 56, 84 values. So I'm gonna take 1984 and subtract 84. And now I'm working with the year 1900. Oh, so much easier to do 1900. So that lets us do zero plus zero over four. So the 1984 actually has a century and year value combined that add up to zero. Really nice. So if you had a whole bunch of dates you were trying to figure out in 1984, you'd century and year is zero and it's super easy and quick to just do the month and the day. Okay, so now we combine these up. Four, 19, and zero adds up to 23. I could reduce that down to two if I wanted because it's two over 21, plus a zero. So then we take 23 divided by seven. The remainder is a two. And so what day of the week was that? Tuesday. Hopefully that's the answer that you had. All right, so we've done it all now. You've got the practice down. Now, how do you get good at this? It just takes practice. So I would recommend you try and do this by hand with uh, with a paper and pencil type of thing and you work out some of these problems that we've got in the practice in that packet. But then you wanna start trying to do it with just in your head. One of the tricks I do is I stick my uh, my hands in my pockets and I kinda, like I hold little numbers out on my in my fingers to help me remember what numbers I'm tracking. Like if, if a century and year value reduces down to a four, I put a, put a four in my pocket uh, with my fingers and I just remember that as I'm working on the month and the day or something like that. So hopefully you enjoyed this and uh, hopefully you are able to impress some people and appear as a genius as you can show off calculating the day of the week for any date in history. 